Well, once again, baby, we're back with another brand new episode of the Hitherch Podcast. And of course, as always, I got the fucking white rhino. We're actually, I'm going to say it in a, in a secretive place. I'm not going to give any names out. But in this episode, we have our good friend, Luis. He was on a couple very earlier episodes on the Hitherch Podcast. And of course, like I said, on our story post, he's a part of history. Yes. So we're here today, baby. And, you know, cheers, cheers, it's going to be a good time. So, yeah. Mm. Touch tips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, so... Love to- so this is how this came down, right? So I, I want to say this because it, this had me laughing. So I, I, I reached out to Luis, right? And there was the first the first date that we gave out, you know, for us to meet up and have this, you know, go down. You know, there was just some stuff that came up in regards to work. Second time around, he's like, I asked him, oh, would you want anything to drink when we come over? And he is like, oh yeah, give me some space dust. In my mind, I was like, space dust. I'm like, is that a, like, is that the new slang for cocaine? And, and I, I honestly thought for one second, I'm like, I'm gonna tell Brett this right here. Yeah. So he's like, oh no, it's a beer. I'm like, oh okay. I was like, I thought you meant coke. He's oh. like, he's like, you could bring some too if you want. I I would have thought space dust was the same thing. Right? I, thought, I thought we'd be getting like some angel dust or something. No, like but, that. We, but we're sipping on. I oh. mean, uh, like I said, this is I guess just. Uh, yeah, Elysian space dust. So Elysian space dust. Yeah, Elysian. That's what he called it. <laughs> yeah, Elysian. I think. I mean, like, <laughs> I think it's from here. Is it really? Yeah, it's so, local. They're local. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So, it's hey, I, I can yeah. taste the. Uh, I can taste turn. the hops. That right? IPA yeah. hit ya. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, you need one or two of these, and you're solid. You're solid. Mm. Oh shit. Well, we'll find out tonight. But of course, um, we got our boy Luis here, brother. I mean, yeah. uh, how have you been? I know it's been a while since we've caught up from last time. This was pre-COVID, I think, and during COVID. It but, um, was. But, dude, how are you doing today, bro? Oh, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm excited to see you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course, uh, man. You know, trying to say something funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that comes that comes, that comes, comes naturally. Don't worry, bro. Um, You'll get the hang of it. You'll get yeah. the hang of it. It's like riding a trike for the first time, only with one uh, one of those little uh, training wheels, only one yeah. to start off with, and then two. Hey, you know what I got to break This the, is the uh, safe, third. funny elixir right here, Okay, baby. so fuck it. So <laughs> slam it all down or just sip it? <laughs> no, just sip it. Oh, good, good, good. Sip it if you want We to. still got families, you baby. Sip it if you're scared. <laughs> Woo! Man. So uh, we got a little special Ow. juice juice on this, Ooh. and uh, yes, yes. yeah, man. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah. But brother, I mean, dude. So obviously, we've talked before the craziness happened, which of course, I mean, yeah. it's kind of like I guess old news before COVID and all that. Um, you can check out that episode out if uh, you haven't done so. It's available on all streaming major streaming platforms. But I mean, I feel like we have so much to catch up on. Yeah. But bro, I mean, um. How you been through all that? I mean, I know it's kind of weird to find a perfect spot to catch, like to kind of continue on from. But I mean, uh, COVID and everything. How was that? Like, because to us, when we talk about it, it almost seemed one of those things where we joked a lot about it, thinking it wasn't really going to affect us. But lo and behold, it just like that. You, everything changed. Yeah. Right? As, as a tattoo artist, though, you were literally one of the industries that our governor shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so. Uh, it's been pretty crazy after the COVID stuff. It, for me, it feels like it's been kind of like a reality shift mm. uh, in mm. that a lot has changed. Um, I had one of my uncles pass because oh. of COVID. Oh, uh, and then sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, um, and it just happened fast. Yeah, like within weeks, it was just like done. Uh, mm. And uh, yeah, the when I when tattooers weren't allowed to function that was interesting yeah uh, luckily for me i was able to pick up on some welding mm. yes and that was fun man of many hats yeah <laughs> <laughs> for sure um, literally so that was cool that was fun doing just welding at my garage for a mm. bit. um and I saw some of your art. I was following you on on Instagram and I would see your videos of your welding. All of the welding yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. dope it, it it's fun you know it really yeah. is a lot like tattooing Mm. Uh, in that you try to make it look pretty and uh, you get to start from scratch and just build something and care about like the quality and the way that it looks yeah. and the presentation. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, so I definitely took it like an art form and it, I, 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 I realized that a lot of the techniques and a lot of like the focus really correlates to tattoo, like preparing a piece and uh, going through it, building something. Uh, Paying attention to detail, looking at all like the little, you know, f- from really like close up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. far as making the welds look good, and as far as like in welding, uh, make sure you're cutting right, or else you're just gonna fucking waste money and shit like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. So th- there's definitely a, uh, a danger to it in that. Um, but it and 
Oh, sorry. And you also had a kid at this time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Too. So I have three That's little right. boys now. That's right. Yeah. Uh, he was born July 17th. Uh, so that was through COVID, right? Yeah, yeah that was, was through COVID. That was through yeah. COVID, yeah. So it was crazy. It Got was just interesting. It. it was interesting to just kind of, and a little bit nerve wracking to be in there in the middle of all the weirdness. And mm. there was a lot of rumors about, like, oh, you're not going to be able to keep, like, hold the baby. Like, they got to do all kinds of weird shit. Luckily, it wasn't like that. Good. Uh, oh, that's good. good. Yeah. Uh, but it was definitely scary for sure. Yeah. Uh, but thankfully we're alive. You know, yep. we we did catch the COVID uh, last December. The whole house did. So that was like two, three weeks off. Yeah. Of just kicking it and being at the house. <laughs> did it kick your ass? Did you get a bad one? Or? Uh, it wasn't more. For me, it wasn't more than just like fevers, you know, like yeah. fevers for like days. Yeah. Um, and just feeling tired and just mucusy forever. Did you lose your uh, smell, taste? I, I didn't lose it, but I did develop a weird, like, a uh, taste with, especially if I had something that uh, contained like vinegar at all. Hmm. It was like amplified. Like wow. it was crazy. Wow. Um, and it was it was just weird, and it you know it lasted a, a while, but I didn't lose any of my taste, okay. so that was cool. Um, yeah, that was a wild experience just being at home for so long. But it was nice. It was nice and relaxing. You have no choice but to be home. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like Brett was like a it. yeah. Brett was kind of like a vet. Like he caught it like six times. I swear. I'm, I've a caught it three times. And so I, I remember the first time he caught it. You, I, you know, we talked about it on the pod before. But you got pretty fucking sick. But then you're like, oh shit, what if I had COVID this whole time and I was like the first one that had it? I'm like, dude, yeah. what if you were? You know what I'm yeah, saying? that's what, this is like, before everything started at like like kind of popping up, talking about the person that had it here first. Yeah. So we were kind of like, oh shit, what if you did? And I was around you kind of during that time yeah, a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. And I never and, got it though. Um when I yeah, I got a lot of people sick from that thing. <laughs> and uh but it, and, and I even came back with a mask and everything, but I don't want to focus on COVID. We're fucking so past, past that it. bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are here to talk about <laughs> Louise and our fucking tattoo. And and let's get crunk. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> for sure yeah. yeah, COVID. Uh, you know, COVID. I, I guess COVID's a thing of the past. Now we got all these all these other crazy news. But, but yeah, that yeah. was but that, know, the thing about the, the COVID. I guess the reason why we brought that up was because lit- that all of those restrictions it put you in a new direction mm-hmm. for like what a year or yeah, was for that sure. longer? Right. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was like six months. Six months. Um, I think I and didn't then, count, but it felt like it. Yeah. And what I remember was like six months. And it was a good break from tattooing for some reason. Oh, at the time, okay. I was like, Switch okay, up. well, let me just, like, because, you know, there's definitely waves in, um, like, the art form, I would say, within myself to where there's, like, a season of, like, oh, I'm doing really good, and I feel like all my tattoos are looking the way that I want. Yeah. But, you know, I know that there's still a lot of things that I need to sharpen up, right? Uh, and then there's times where I'm like, ah, oh, you know, everything I'm doing, I'm just not liking it. Like, uh, even my drawings, like, I, I try to draw and everything just looks like shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, I was going through that for sure. And so the fact that I was kind of, like, forced to stop a little bit, I I embraced it. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, I'm just going to, like, play it safe, not do the tattoo stuff. I like welding. Let's try and do some welding. Let's see what happens. And um, welding is a lot of fun, but it's just so much more involved. Uh, creating a client in tattooing and creating a client in like the the world field is, is a lot more two hard. different yeah world just ah. the work to, just the work alone to get going it's just you gotta do so many more things <laughs> uh, but it's fun it's equally wow. fun um I just didn't really have the space to really like go for it right sure um or the energy <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know as soon as I got back into tattooing it felt fresh and it felt like okay well let's let's see what you got this time around and so i've been at that and um i feel like i've progressed ever since cool um and there's definitely a lot more to do a lot more to go uh so it's been fun you uh last time we talked you had a lot of focus on like um photograph tattoos Mm. right oh portraits portraits yeah portraits yeah i always love anything with a face is really what i enjoy most so you're Um, still on that tip then i still am Uh, i wish i could do more of that like just that, yeah. Um, but I haven't put myself there yet. Um, and why is that? Like, do you not? Do you feel like you're not? Like you still? Like you say, you're still sharpening your skills to where you want to fine tune some things to get you to that level. Because I'm sure, like, obviously, when someone comes in with a portrait like idea, right? They want it to look exactly like that 
on there wherever mm-hmm. they're getting at right so there's definitely like a line of i guess you know uh pressure on you in a way to where like yeah you want to make sure it comes out top notch you know what i'm saying yeah i feel like i feel fluent but i definitely there's definitely room for improvement yeah yeah yeah. um especially with like the people that i follow yeah 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 um but the reason i say that i haven't put myself there yet is because in in order to sharpen that like just a portrait like i have to sharpen lines and i have to sharpen Mm, saturation and you know all the other areas Mm. that are gonna push my portraits right Uh, just the attack on the skin and all kinds of details um and being able to design like Mm -hmm. anything with a face meaning like not just make it a portrait but like design a whole piece around a face whether it's somebody's portrait or not as long as it's a face that's what i like and gotcha. um, and i want to be able to like have most of my clients know that that's the kind of work that i put out do you okay they, okay they come to me specifically for that yeah knowing like, hey let me get a piece of like whatever this female with a fucking seattle hat or whatever <laughs> you know yeah. and just make it crazy so that's the kind of shit that i'm trying to like okay use, just to create something and as long as it's got like a face or a skull or some shit with you know anatomy almost yeah i think that's the stuff for me um but i have to push it in that i have to make good designs that you know that are undeniable yeah. and that uh stand out and that people want to get that and people if they want to get tatted by me um they come for something like that versus coming for something you know more generic i guess yeah um but it's it it takes a long time to do that to put yourself there for sure what um are is there like a like a popular design or you know thing that people go for and does that change over time or oh yeah there's definitely like trends right yeah um but things that everything's been done i believe that everything's been done yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything's been redone and redone yeah uh and everything can be fun uh like for example for a long time a lot of people were doing owls or a lot of people were doing lions you know yeah and it can get boring or you can get creative you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely seasons of trends and everybody wants to get the, uh, the I don't know, the like tattoo right here or like the infinity symbol yeah. at some point. Which or the is little cool. heartbeat. I, I know. With I the heart, that a lot. letters with the heartbeat, <laughs> which is like, oh, okay, you want that? Okay, I'll do my best. And My fourth one today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but those are the tricky ones, man, because it's they're so small and they got to be so precise. Yes. And then they usually want it in somewhere extremely tricky to tap. So it's a challenge. It makes me sweat for sure whenever I do those. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So whenever I look at a tattoo like that, I sweat. Whenever I look at a portrait, I'm like super excited. Yeah. Oh, so it's like vice versa. I feel like the smallest thing makes you so fucking nervous. Yeah. The bigger was like, oh, I got this in the back. Yeah. You know what, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's that's like crazy. that for sure. <laughs> um, and that's because that's what I practice most. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's important to practice all of it so that uh, your your skills are there, right? And they all translate, those skills translate into the tattoo if I want to make a solid line in this portrait because of the eyebrow or the makeup or whatever. Like, mm. I'll be able to attack a good solid line, right? Yeah. That's kind of what I mean by like. Do you have like a, a like a signature? Like people know like, hey, this is a Luis Hernandez um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Hmm. I would like to say, but I don't think I'm there yet. Okay. It's like, okay, that's a sick ass Luis piece. For yeah. I, I'm definitely not there yet. I would feel like I would. I personally, or maybe my friends or peers, would know a piece that I did just yeah. by the style of yeah. um, attack or whatever. Um, but I'm not there yet to where it's like, oh, let's get a Luis Hernandez. Okay, piece. you know what I mean. But that's what I'm just because you haven't hit a celebrity yet. Once yeah. you get a celebrity, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd have. I feel like I'd have to trap. I don't know. I don't know. How I'm gonna call go some 90 Day that. Fiance people. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, use your struggle hey, power, power right there. Celebrity, what are you talking about? Yeah, right. need use a celebrity right, right there, there, right? Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I'm yeah, you're so me back. We need. We need to put that. We need to put that into. You know, we need. We've talked about this before. Just to jump on a different. Unblock me off of Instagram and make it. So that's one thing we talked about before. Now, good thing you brought that up because I remember. I have a good pretty good memory for the most part that we said there was a certain goal we would reach that you would get tatted up now 10,000 10, 10, okay, s- youtube subscribers 10,000 youtube subscribers oh, so right. let's reiterate that right now before we lose fucking before we get lost in the sauce <laughs> if we hit 10,000 subscribers on youtube and we're being this is going to be out on youtube itself and we're actually live on on twitch i'm obviously <laughs> if people don't know living on the rock brett was on a little show called 90 fiance now mind you 
He <laughs> said why he starts to wear the shades. Yeah, people recognize. Yeah, don't recognize. He's, he's low key. He's really low key. <laughs> now, verbatim, he said that if we were to get ten thousand subscribers on YouTube, this man would get a tattoo of a grizzly bear on his chest, yeah. done by none only the one and only Luis here. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> As that that deal stands firm Woo! today. Now I talked to my family about it. They absolutely hate this idea. <laughs> So, which might incentivize people to subscribe, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's not just a regular bear yeah. tattoo, right? It's yeah. like gonna be the uh, a grizzly bear, like a Kodiak, yeah. right, standing up, and then uh, and then I'll just shave all around, you know. So it's just a big hairy bear, <laughs> yeah. oh shit, you know, coming right you got out that of the hair, bro. What's that? You got that much hair? Oh, he does. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty furry, <laughs> you know. Like, like I wouldn't want to be uh, caught after dark in the woods. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know? It's either Sasquatch or a bear. Absolutely. One of those two, yeah, right? Brett yeah. Squatch. <laughs> <laughs> we could all we could alter it too. We could make it like a a, a Sasquatch too. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been on that Sasquatch too. Oh yeah, we have it. <laughs> so, like right. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Right. I don't know if there's any room in the contract to you know alter, but yeah, alter you know, it. That's all. Right. We have to talk to her. <laughs> but so you said in regards to traveling now is, is that one thing that's ever crossed your path because i know i've heard of like um some people that have tattoo artists travel like it's kind of like almost a similar thing where like barbers they'll do like house calls right they'll go to like you know do their thing whatever but it's going to charge you a little extra like is that something that's i guess done in the tattoo world you could say like doing like a travel oh like house call yeah it's calls like that um i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that do it is it legal i guess you can say i mean course right all right <laughs> i don't think that it's a, like if, if for example i don't think it's illegal to have somebody come over at your house and tat you, you okay I, mean? I, mean, so, I would see nothing wrong with it mm -hmm. um it's just a lot of work for sure bring your stuff every time yeah. yeah and you don't know how like their house is like if it's like sanitary and all dog, that dogs running yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 i feel yeah sanitary yeah. at all so <laughs> it's just too much to think too much to consider, okay. unless you really need to or unless you'd like to yeah if you'd yeah. like to then that's cool um I'm, I haven't really done that much. Like gone like, because uh, I know there's there's certain, what I've seen too before when we went to a Comic-Con, there was actually tattoo artists there tattooing at the Comic-Cons uh -huh. and they were oh, doing pieces. Cool. So like, uh, is that something that's ever crossed oh, your conventions path? conventions and stuff? Conventions, stuff like uh, that. Yeah, that thing, that stuff's great, especially if you want to get out there and know mm -hmm. and people know who you are yeah. and create clients everywhere. Yeah. And surround yourself with like top-notch artists who yeah. are just going to inspire you and... Uh, you know, just you're gonna learn, but um, and that's definitely a goal for me. But yeah. at the moment, I need to like be here and be home for sure. Kids, okay. So because I work a lot, if I start traveling, that's gonna I'm not gonna be with the kids that much more. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, and I I can I feel like I can be satisfied tattooing at home, mm -hmm. and then just going home to the kids versus like living to travel, which is. That sounds like amazing. Yeah, I'm sure. It's yeah. I'm sure I can amplify my abilities that way, but I can also amplify my abilities here at home. For sure. For now, um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Okay. I definitely would love to travel, but I think that it's not the time for me. So sure. let's talk about home then. You uh, you have your spot called Fade to Black Tattoo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're here in Everett, Madison, Ever, uh, Evergreen in Madison. So Evergreen right on Madison. Everett. Yeah, yeah. For okay. all the local peeps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a little bit of a story to, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty fucking wild. <laughs> to this I kind of got the creeps when he told me this. Just like, what? <laughs> I, I'm here every day by myself. Oh, at night. Yeah. Scary. Hey. So, uh, yeah. So, so tell us like, uh, how, how did you end up in this spot specifically? Cause you were in a different spot. Obviously, so, oh, yeah, before, so right? after COVID, mm -hmm. I was, I stopped tattooing where, where we were tattooing me and my friends. Shout out to Ruga2020. Or 2010 on Instagram, Ruben Montoya, a really good friend. Um, yeah. A tattooer. He does great work. Nice. Shout out, shout um, out. So I stopped tatting there, and I was doing the welding stuff, and I was just kind of looking for a change change and stuff like that. Um, so I was looking, okay, maybe I want my own space just to focus on myself. And I was started looking on fucking Craigslist, and then I ran into this like cool looking building. I'm Hell like, okay, yeah. this just a small studio, so I'm looking for the price is right. So then I apply, and then pretty quickly I got accepted. Blah blah blah. Uh, so started tatting here, started you know getting everything organized, and uh, one of my clients, uh, 
Your cousin. Oh, okay, okay. Shout <laughs> out to my cousin. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like a year before I got here, a year or two before I got here, I was tanning him, you know, where I was tanned before. And then he's telling me about, oh, yeah, at the place where I'm staying. Some crazy shit went down. The landlord got murdered. and <laughs> <laughs> Some real shit. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Crazy, bro. <laughs> and then, you know, fast forward a year or two, I'm in here. And I noticed that he lives, you know, in the same place. And I meet him and then, or I run into him and then he's like, hey, you know, remember I told you that story? This is, this is where it happened in your studio. This oh, is where you got, yeah. So dude, uh, someone got murdered in this <laughs> very spot where we're filming this here. podcast, oh, which is dude. fucking wild, right? <laughs> the spot is hot. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Can we cut this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to get out. <laughs> I wonder and if you hear like noises at no, night. No, I do. Every time I'm like, no my, shit. Because I'm tan here pretty late and every time everybody leaves, I. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had us. You fucking had us. You had me. See? So not only is not ah, he's you the you're the king of troll. <gasps> Brett gets me a lot. I swear oh, this motherfucker that knows so that he can get good. me. But you, this was that was top notch. I, I think he so matches you on the loop. That was so good. Here's that. Cheers, 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 cheers. No, that was uh, that was a good one. You, you let me on that. I was already sweating. Like no way. <laughs> I wanted to know that? what the noise you was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, there's definitely noises, and I am here by myself late at night. Yeah, but you know, there's noises because there's people upstairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah. noises because the building is, you know, it just it's just building noises. Do you believe in like uh, dark energy or auras or I'm, anything like I'm that? I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure it exists. I'm because sh- you know, I I've heard that there's like a whole bunch of like uh, what would you call them? Um, like. Uh, the supernatural dimensions, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it's like overlaying dimensions. With yeah, yeah, other beings that are also here that we can't mm-hmm. see, can't see us, right? I feel like that that for sure is going on. I mean, I'm guessing, right? It seems to me like it is yeah. definitely a thing. So I'm sure there's that, and I'm sure that there's a whole bunch of other stuff we don't know. Yeah, uh, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, it does get scary. It does get weird, and sometimes I do perceive weird stuff here. Mm. But I do not like. Overthink what, what do you perceive? Uh, like, for example, I'll be 10 and then like, I f- can like f- see on the corner of my eye or feel like a movement, but I don't even internalize it. I just know that like that shit is definitely happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's not like, I'm kind of like, it could be like the reflection on that window. Yeah. From when I moved and there was like a light. Somebody that, and even yeah. if it is in a different dimension, it's like, you can't catch me, motherfucker. I'm in this dimension. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm covered by the blood of Christ. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I'll drink to that. Yeah. I'm not I'll tripping too much yeah. about it. Um, but I, I'm sure there's some stuff going on. I mean, some crazy stuff happened here. I'm of course. I'm sure there's got to be something. Uh, the person's DNA all over the wall. Oh, dude. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever happened, I mean, it, I'm sure it's still some of it right here. <laughs> uh, oh, so, oh, break out the blue light. Uh, oh, I'm dude. chilling because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be a good person at the end of the day. So if you know, yeah, whatever. You, you have good energy. So yeah. like, you know, like normally, I mean, all the stories I've heard with anything that goes in that world, they you know don't normally mess with the people with good energy yeah oh, nice you seem a little laid back i think it'd be like a cool ghost if it was you know what i'm saying but you know your clients if they're coming in with bad energy uh, you know, hey. uh that i was 10 when i was 10 here in this space and like they were laying here and i was 10 on their arm and they're like hey i i feel like i just saw some like on the corner of my eyes some like movement and she didn't know yeah um and she said it twice. And you're not fucking with us this time. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not okay. I was waiting for the okay. punchline. I was waiting like, wait, wait, wait. wait. And, and like, it, like, you know, it, I, I like made a note of it in my head and I didn't tell her. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But at the same time, I can't really like take that too like serious. Because sure. Because like some people, not saying her, because I don't know her like that, but yeah, right. some people are like, you know, they tend to be more like into that stuff. So yeah, they yeah, start yeah. seeing all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. regularly. So you never know what with people right not that that's a negative thing but the fact that she brought that up was interesting to me yeah. yeah but i also know that there's that but i also know like there's a lot of reflection in that mirror there's a lot of reflection <laughs> i thought i saw somebody right now where it's like there's like reflection from like the cracks of light coming down oh and, and all it takes is a car driving yeah. exactly. by exactly okay. okay or somebody walking by yeah no simply you know what i'm saying exactly yeah. so when i'm in that room and then there's like the mirror on the door i i I notice a lot of movement, but a lot of it, I know it comes from like 
that direction okay. reflecting. So there's okay. a lot of that that could easily sounds be like mistaken. you're covering for some ghosts. It sounds yeah. like you're like I'm homies not. with the ghosts. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm that, like, I've definitely <laughs> felt weird. Yeah, but I'm not trying to overdo it because then it can just get weird. For sure, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't want it to get too weird. Yeah. But the fact that that happened, I mean, someone got murked, and you <laughs> said like cut <laughs> up, <laughs> like I, I, I like pretty brutal <laughs> sandwich and shit. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah. that is not crazy. necessarily in That's here. That's gotta be like. like in yeah. this general space. Okay. I'm about to Google right. that after, after we're done this episode. Yeah, Google to the final this fucking yeah, shit. I'm about to, we'll post this up on the fucking description of this video when it drops just to get a little reference so we're not, you and know, I, we're not clouting chasing. Yeah, but I, <laughs> so, like when it comes to real estate, there are people in, in other states where they've tried to get a laws passed where you had to uh, put a disclaimer that, hey, there was something that happened here. Someone died here violently. And, um, and I don't know, you know, if that those laws ever got passed, but you know, some people, you know, I, I think, I mean, I'll just be honest. I think there are people that can see more than other people, right. When um, it comes yeah, to yeah. like other dimensions and ghosts and, oh, you know, yeah. all that, I think that that's why, you know, you have so many ghost hunters that are looking for that stuff. You know, some are like doing it for the gimmick, right. They're doing yeah. it for the 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 clout mm -hmm. um but i think that there like are genuinely people that have these Some abilities of, yeah, yeah these that whatever that can sense that so yeah i'm sure that they're out there there's yeah. this netflix thing on life after death or, or surviving death i've okay. seen like a couple episodes you know it gets really corny but i'm sure there's something to it you know yeah but wow. it's, it's kind of dangerous territory to start tapping into like Trying to connect with that. I've always life. felt that too. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's no need to. Um, well, there was that. I can't talk for the people, for example, like if you've lost somebody and you're just completely destroyed and then, you know, you go that route. Yeah. I can't say anything about it, but I feel like it's not necessarily the route to go. You know, and, and I think that, uh, I think all of us have a personal decision to make when it comes to that because, you know, like I, I have a buddy who I'd love to have on my guest here. Uh, he was a ghost hunter mm -hmm. and um, he, oh man, like he went to that level where I just would not feel comfortable going myself. Um, but he would, he, he told me, he sent me a, a text one time. He goes, Hey, I don't know if you know this, but up in uh, your area, there's a lot of uh, demonic satan satanic activity no uh, and it's very active in this area. That's crazy. And, uh, you know, and I've just, it kind of like threw me off, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, live my normal life. But but Delete. the fact that there are people <laughs> that are <laughs> paying attention to that stuff, you know, it's like oh, the yeah. people with the UFOs, right? Like, I've never yeah. seen a UFO. I've never seen Sasquatch. I've never seen, but there yeah. are people that have had experiences where they will go out themselves and look for that stuff. Yeah. Well, what's one in reference to what you were saying about life after death? There was that crazy article, Brett, that you brought up that was very interesting about the the gentleman that was having a a C, was it a CT scan or a brain scan? Oh, yeah. In the midst of he actually died in the midst of getting like a like a CT scan, and they found out that his brain within thirty seconds it was like it was able to pretty much like when they say life flashes before your very own eyes, it was happening at that moment. Whoa. It was like a, a yeah. very rare occurrence that happened that the brain was doing something for those 30 seconds it was they, going into the memory part yeah. of the Whoa. brain and 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 it was sending out euphoric uh chemicals in your brain so like he died a very peaceful death and they could the scientists so they were they were Whoa. tracking There's seizures shit, so he though. he was a, a excuse me a patient who was suffering from seizures so scientists wanted to take a closer look at it well he died on the table while mm -hmm. they were scanning his brain and uh, he had a do not resuscitate band on. So they're like, keep keep the scan running. Uh, we want to know what his brain is saying. And exactly wow. like Eddie said, that it's that fucking they could wild. See that so it was wild. it was euphoric. Um, he he was like at peace, and he it was going into the memory part of his brain where he could just see. Everything, everything. Whoa. His That's life was crazy. Flashing so maybe, his eyes. maybe the, the the true. It's true when they say that life flashes before your eyes when when they're they're yeah. that that near death experience that really happens. I'm, that's crazy. It's yeah, a fucking trip. Yeah, right? It's cool scary to think about. Some I, type of like evidence of that, right? Some type of connecting, like yeah, that they were able to like. Yeah, well, that know, yeah, they said that. that's this is the first of its kind. Yeah, uh, scientific 
uh, evidence to show that. Wow. But they and they were talking about in this article. They said that you know cultures from all over the world have always felt this. We've yeah. always seen it in those movies, right? Yeah. And we're yeah. all telling the same story multiculturally. Yeah, that's in, that's, that's the type of stuff that like keeps me up at night when I read stuff like that. Like it fucks with me. Well, that's like, awesome. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Like, you know I, what I'm saying? I have a friend that I was just talking to, uh, and he was like, for some reason, talking about like dying, right? He's like, yeah, if I die, like I'm, I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna be at peace. I, I yeah. feel like I've, I, I've enjoyed myself. Mm-hmm. And I've done everybody right. Mm-hmm. And he's a stand up guy, and he enjoys his himself. I didn't agree with him, not with him and his life, but I was like, damn, I don't want to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's I too got soon. my kid. I ain't ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, do and, you know, whatever. Um, but that's cool to know that, you know, that that guy was in peace when, like, yeah. that was going going down. Yeah, that's you know that's saying? all I hope. I hope I'm euphoric and, you know, get to see this. Yeah. yeah. Um, damn, so uh, that's crazy that he had Don't Resuscitate. Do not resuscitate, yeah. 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 Set up. Like he just didn't want to even fuck yeah. his life no more. He was just well, I think he was just at that time and at that state of health where it was just like, all right, it's over. It happens, it's over. It happens. It's over. I, I want to be done with this. But isn't it crazy to get to that age where like you know eventually you know everybody has their date and you know yeah. for it to happen, but for, for for him to get like for this individual to go through that and and to get to that point in life where you're like, if it happens, it happens. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's it's just got to be like for me right now, especially in the age where we're at. It's just so hard to really accept that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Especially, Especially when you, when you so, got kids, yeah. you got so much to do. Yeah. Yeah. But this guy probably had just everything he wanted to accomplish. He was at like he was probably at peace too. So he or just he let me was go. just kind of like, you know, I haven't really been fucking up, but I'm dealing with this epilepsy. I'm yeah. dealing with this stuff that I don't even need. Yeah. You're I'm tired. You are? Oh, someone no, no, else. No, the guy oh, that, the guy that uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the seizures yeah. and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with in relation to any of that, are there any like crazy pieces, not crazy, but like pieces that are, you know, go into that you're like, wow, that's a that's a pretty crazy like piece. An, like that an somebody backstory pretty comes much. in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. with tattoos? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't want to talk about tattoos. Bro. Oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, damn, dude, he's got jumps on him today. Hey, he's one. He's hey, two for one. Me. He's two for zero. These are he got, <laughs> hey, cheers. We got to go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Cheers to everybody watching here. Hopefully everybody's having a fantastic Friday. Pick up some space dust. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, the question, the question so remains. Yeah. Is there any crazy tats? Like, uh, uh, yeah, just like somewhere, you, you know, someone came in with this idea and you're tattooing and you're like, wow, th- this is like so unique or so like far out there from the norm. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I have very bad memory. Um, top three, top five, think. top one, you name it. We got time. <laughs> oh, while you're thinking, I'm, I, I, I got some gifts. I, I came bearing gifts, boys. Oh, we're, oh. we're on our Suge Knight tip right now, baby. Because, yeah. of course, you know, uh, we always reference Death Row Records, which you have the lovely blanket right here with the infamous Death Row, um, the guy in the chair getting uh, pretty much killed or electrocuted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just going to the next life. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the next yeah. life. <laughs> Peaceful yeah, life. Exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's got some Death Row cigars right there. Mm-hmm. So, so we got uh, Brazil, Honduras, or Nicaragua. And I'll let you guys pick which ones you want, and let then uh, I'll get Brazil. And, and, and I'll tell you this: I went to the tat, or not tattoo shop. I went to the <laughs> cigar shop. This was in uh, La Conner, Washington, and uh, one of these one of these cigars, apparently only twenty five stores in all of the United States carry it. Oh, wow. And I don't know which one it is. Oh, oh. look at the draw. <laughs> it's like Pokemon cards. You don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so, so one of them is a rarity. Oh here. yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Okay, I'll you're going with one. Brazil? Yeah, yeah. Let you, I'll go Eddie? last. I'll go last. No, no, no. 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 Okay, okay. okay. Uh, this one that was closest to me. I'll pick this one. You're going uh, with that. Uh, the, the Honduras? Florida? The Honduras. No, Honduras. Your, Honduras. Honduras. Shout okay. out to all the Honduran people and that are listening out there. Uh, if there is any. But yeah, shout out to everybody from Honduras. Shout out to the Nicaraguans. Oh, too. dude. Yeah, shout so out to Brazil. We're going to make a scene. Brazil. We're going <laughs> to. Brazil. There's so, a lot of good music in Brazil. Yeah? Like, what kind of good music? I listen to a lot of. Not a lot of. I listen to. A good amount of Portuguese okay. music. Oh. What does that Religious sound like? Music. Oh, it's wow. It's a lot like Spanish. It's a lot like Spanish. Yeah. Um, they got some really good stuff out there. So that's one yeah. thing, too, that I've been seeing you lately do. You've been on your uh, on your music tip as well. That's what I oh, say. I, I, call this, I, I call this man uh, a man of very hats, a person with many hats because... I only got... Dude, I've been wearing the same, the same hat, hat for like a but <laughs> He's got... They're in rotation. Probably the same hat, but there's multiple ones in rotation. But um, you've been playing like uh, your guitar and yeah, you've been posting videos oh, stuff like that. So yeah, I love music. Oh, Music's uh, forever has been a big part of my life. 
Yeah. Um, I just enjoy doing it. I just enjoy jamming. Mm-hmm. I used to jam with my brother and my cousins just growing up all the time. So I never really wanted to let go of that. And, yeah. Um, and now I'm trying to like show my kids that, you know, you could do music. Yeah. Oh, you that's dope. Kind of have fun. Yeah. Just today I, I was jamming at the house with my acoustic. And so I've been kind of like, you know, overdoing it at the house with the music uh, in front of the kids. Uh, I got like a mic stand. I got a little drum set. Oh wow! Nice. They can use. You're gonna have the Jackson into Five. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, you know they're interested for sure, but they're at the age where they just want to destroy everything. So they're, <laughs> they're. I know that they're interested, and I know that they're gonna be talented. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or skilled, for sure. Um, but they just want to destroy everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What I've been doing to enjoy myself and purposefully to also to kind of show them, what, you know what they can probably do if they want. Yeah. yeah. And so I've been just kind of like overdoing it and pushing it to them and just kind of like obnoxiously doing it and just uh, playing and singing. And yeah. Annoying them with my metal and my music. And because uh, they all they do is like to watch Coco Melon or like. Yeah. yeah you same thing with my daughter, Coco Melon. <laughs> they my just love too. that stuff. <laughs> and they're always like, turn your music off. I can't hear it. And so wow. I push it every day. Dude. And so today specifically, uh, and it happens every now and then, but today, like my middle, ch- middle boy, he's three. He's three. <laughs> <laughs> he's three. Santiago. Um, it's the liquor. It's the liquor people. It's all good. Yeah. He's, uh, he went to the music room and he grabbed the mic stand and he grabbed the mic and put it in there. Yeah. Put it in the living room. and Nice. And I was jamming the guitar just being obnoxious yeah yeah and he just starts singing you know oh wow that's amazing like you know he loves uh there's the movie sing sing so they okay, know okay, okay. all the songs and they like to like act it out yeah. yeah so they know what it is and they see like the bands that i watch and they're all very expressive and like yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so he's doing that and they yeah. pick up on that stuff yeah. yeah exactly and i could tell that he's like he has a lot of like you know energy that he needs to release mm. And um, oh, that's perfect. And so I feel like you know he's gonna be really good at doing that if he likes that. But it seems like today he was like really enjoying himself. I got a couple of videos. Yeah, dude, I'm was, like grabbing like, the mic and I, I was just talking to someone uh, earlier this week who is having kind of some issues with her kid, right? Like he's just high strung and um, it's just kind of he's six years old and he's just being really self destructive, you know, and and. Uh, and, you know, and it, it just brought me back to my my life. When I was a kid, I was just, like, so self-destructive. I mean, I would break every toy I got. And, you know, but when I discovered music, I mean, in my teenage years, um, I remember the first rap song I heard. I, I, I remember, like, hearing um, Warren G. Regulators, like, oh, when we go to the Boys and Girls Club. You yeah. know, I remember hearing it. I remember hearing um, um, uh, Snoop Dogg. What was his song? Um Gin and Juice. I remember hearing that one, but like they didn't really like stick with me at that time. the The song that really hit me uh, was Coolio's "Gangsters Paradise," oh, and classic. um, and then that and, and it was my younger well, at brother. What age? Huh? At what age? I was eleven. Nice. I was eleven That's when cool. I heard that. Young cat. That's it was like ninety five, yeah. you know. And then um, and then I I. <sighs> I got to this point where I was just like so alone because we moved to Montana and I was just so alone. And, and then I met my, my best friend growing up. He was the best man in my wedding. And, uh, he was the one, I don't know what it was, but he, he introduced me to, uh, the dog, uh, dog pound from death row and, uh, their album dog food and Tupac, his, uh, me against the world and I was like, wow, you know, and all of a sudden I'm like, maybe I can write to this shit. You know? I'm like, hey, I'm hearing the lyrics <laughs> that and I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> you know, every, everything other than shooting each other all the time, I can relate to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, minus the killing, not minus, the killing, <laughs> yeah, minus all the, like, you know, the, the thing, but like, you know, being poor, not having a dad in the home. Uh, and just all the anxiety that comes with that, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, maybe I can do it. But oh, music crazy. was like my conduit, and then that's when I, I sort of like, and and mine was hip hop, right? If I could go back, right, I probably would have went with more of like a the acoustic guitar. Man has been man. a dream of mine to learn because the music that comes from that thing is unparalleled to anything I've ever heard. I could listen to acoustic all day. Yeah, the acoustic guitars, like, uh, okay, so growing up, teenager, just metal, right? Metallica, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Avenged Sevenfold, 
Pantera, right? Super uh-huh. metal. Uh, and then I stopped doing music regularly because so we, me and my brother and my cousins were in bands like going up to teenagers, right? We even did like Latin salsa cumbia. Wow. Oh, really? The cumbia? Performing. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. And it was from 16 to like 19, I believe. We were doing that, yeah. going to uh, clubs and just kind of not being allowed there, but yeah, still yeah. performing. And it taught us like a different realm of music, rhythm, blah blah blah. Uh, and then I and then I started doing church pretty heavy, and so then I started getting into that yeah. rhythm and that style. Mm-hmm. And then I get out of that, and then um, I don't really have anybody to jam with, so I'm like, okay, let me focus on the acoustic guitar, mm. uh, where I don't have a distortion pedal, where I don't have blah blah blah, and it's yeah. just me and you know, and my out of tune vocals. So that now let's sharpen how to strum a rhythm and then let's try to sharpen staying in tune throughout the whole fucking song. So it, man, the acoustic guitar is great because you just need your guitar and your vocals and you can do whatever you want. Yep. And any, you know, I heard around, right? Any song, like if you know you got a great song, um, you, you know, you record it and you do all the instruments, but if you can play it acoustically and it's still a good song, then then it's a good song, right? Yeah. So, uh, Oh, the, yeah, don't let anyway. it happen again. Oh, okay. Brett's gonna fucking it. walk out of this and Nobody fucking throw shit it. everywhere. YouTube didn't see it. <laughs> Nobody saw it. Oh, Nothing ever happened. the guitar, man. You can get crazy with it. You yeah. can be chill with it. It's man. You can take it anywhere. You don't need an amplifier. All you yeah. need is just yeah. a guitar, it's, dude. I, it's, yeah. And it's it's a little bit more like intense to like you know for your fingers. Uh-huh. But if you like get used to it and then you pick up an electric guitar, you're like, oh, this shit is fucking. Oh, right? so yeah. the electric guitar is easier. It's not easier to do, right? But Easier on your fingers. Yeah, like the acoustic guitars, like you a little bit. It's more heavy, okay. right? Okay. Like strings are more heavy. Like you gotta kind of press a little bit harder. You get more strength. I remember that because I'd get like, do you have the calluses on your hand on your fingers? I do, and, and you know they go like on and off because I'm I play on and off, right? Yeah, yeah. So right now I have a little bit of callus. Uh, if I were to play like three days in a row, then I'd start getting in okay. For sure. <laughs> That's what. But the calluses are good though, right? No, because for sure. The, like yeah. I can bend, in, I can bend like a couple notes on the acoustic guitar right now because all I play is the acoustic. Yeah. I don't even have an electric guitar right now. So, um, so what's your like? What's your favorite cover song I like to do when you just want to fucking feel like you want to get on the guitar and just fucking let it happen? Ah, uh, well, my favorite cover. Your favorite cover. Whatever. It just depends on the t- on the season. Okay, the season. Right now, <laughs> right now I'm playing a lot of The Doors. Okay. Oh, a song called oh, 5 to man. 1 that I'm just really trying to like nail. Just because it's very like, it's bluesy, it's simple on the guitar, but uh-huh. tricky if you're singing it. And, you, and it's like very basic, but you have to get like dynamics to where like you have to like make the song interesting when it's a very boring basic song. And the way to do that is to like give it dynamics by you know starting off like gentle and then getting intense and then going back to gentle but like doing it smoothly so, wow yeah this song called five to one it's very like kind of like a dirty song not like vocally dirty but like it's just a blues nasty song oh, that, i'm gonna listen to it yeah it's okay good. It's, i'm curious it's a really good song um that's the kind of stuff i'm into uh right now um oh uh, Arctic Monkeys, I really enjoy. Arctic Monkeys, uh, yeah, hmm. I really enjoy them. What song. genre are they? Um, they're like um, alternative rock. Okay. Uh, they're. I never heard of them. Yeah, I never. Oh, yeah. really? No. They're, they started off very like punkish. They're they're like uh, from uh, the UK. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Man, you're a cultured mother. Yeah, um, yeah. you're I'm everywhere. <laughs> no, he says he's locally, but he's like everywhere. That's you know amazing. What I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, hey, these guys are pretty out there. Um. Can you read a refill on the on the beer, please, sir? Oh, absolutely. Mr. Sash, I know we, we got to keep yeah. the juices flowing. Yeah, the conversation's good, good. you know. Man. We got we got to keep the feel going. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for for again, for anybody that's watching on Twitch, thank you for tuning in. Um, Tiffix Podcast, our direct links are in our bio. Check it out. And yeah, we're here with our boy Luis. But There's uh, this artist uh, James Arthur. He's he's also from the UK. I've heard of him. He was in like this uh, singing competition. Okay. Okay. And, uh, He's got an amazing R and B voice, amazing R and B voice, and he does amazing like, uh, you know, acoustic stuff. And so I look up to him, and I try to play stuff. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's "Forever." Oh, I got <laughs> Stevie oh, Ray Vaughan. Right. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> right there, yeah. I was gonna ask you. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I just like really intense shit. You know, dramatic shit. This one, I like, 
a lot of what I play is like more dark and like almost depressing shit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Alice in Chains, I really like. Mm. Oh that stuff. man. Uh, but I, you know, it's not necessarily my personality too much. But yeah. when it comes to music, it's yeah. what I dig, like just the intent. Isn't that amazing, though? I, okay, so look, dude, it's crazy. Just the music tip. I didn't you expect to go oh, yeah, in this. It, yeah, bro. yeah, I didn't expect to go in this direction. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bartender slack. I know, right? It's all no good. It's all good. We still love it, bro. Right. You still guys don't you. have to tip me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll tip you. Oh, we'll tip. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Double tip. <laughs> um. So, like, okay. So, Eddie, Eddie, th- this is how it all sparked. Uh, a couple weeks ago, he's like, "Hey, Brett." <laughs> yeah, my voice wasn't that deep, but you know, like, yeah, it was close to that. It was close to that. Yeah. Well, it was over a text. So. <laughs> that's how you read it. That was the that's how he heard, heard it in his, in his yeah. head. That's how he heard it in his head. <laughs> yeah. But he was like, "Have you ever heard of heard the uh, Jay Z Reasonable Doubt album?" I'm like. Hmm, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, because like I, 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 that was at the time where like Tupac was beefing with the J, and so I was just riding with Pac. You know, West Coast all day, <laughs> right. every day, man. He was on the yeah. West Coast every day, right? That's so I totally crazy. like That's slept on that album, and um, and didn't pay any attention to it. And then all of a sudden, Eddie brings it up, and I'm listening to it, and it just like brought my whole soul back to the mid '90s again. And I'm like, I'm listening to every song, and I'm like feeling a part of it i'm like wow this is crazy because it's just like there's nothing like that mid 90s hip-hop sound that was the golden era that was and um and i'm just like i I could feel like the energy running through my body And, and if you're an artist or a creative you'll you'll understand that and so i'm just like i'm feeling this energy and i'm like oh my god what am i gonna do with this so you know, so the first thing I did was I found a um rapping forte beat. Rapping forte, <laughs> baby. And it was uh uh Players Club, but it was like the remix that he had. And I literally wrote a song for the tip touch. You your name was in it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I yeah. think I have it after after we're done. I can't play it on here because we'd get cut from the copyright. <laughs> yeah. But I'll play it. I'll, I'll let you That's see. That crazy. was the first song, but then I like wasn't done. Like the energy was still there, and uh, and so I'm just like browsing through these instrumentals that I could buy, and I found this super dope reggae beat, right? <laughs> and like <laughs> I can't even explain how the fucking song came, but it was like a song about like this guy. So the, the song's titled. Uh, I'll, I'll play that for you too. Um, uh, I can see that she loves me. And like the chorus is like, I can see that she loves me, but she ain't doing nothing for me. And I'm not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's just like being, talking about being in the most toxic relationship. Like here you are, you're like giving your whole life for this girl. And she's just like, she's crazy. You know, she's like getting in fights. She's going to jail. And like, you're always there. You're just like giving her flowers when she posts bail. Right. And so I, uh, and it was just like, I couldn't explain why I told that particular story or it was just like, that's when I heard that, that reggae beat, that's the story that came to me. That's crazy. And I just finished it. And it was like, so my daughter, just like your kids, right? Like they're like watching our thing. So she's seeing me recording. And then, oh, that's dope. Oh yeah, and 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 I love oh, you're her. Recording when she, this in your spot. I was just like sitting down recording. Like nice. I was just like like I was doing a podcast. Oh, that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, all right, I, you know, I got my phone. I'm reading the lyrics, and you know, I just wanted to get the flow down. So if like I ever wanted to go to a studio and do it, at least I'd know how the song yeah. was supposed to sound. Just yeah, practice. Yeah, exactly. And so then I, you know, I know the lyrics. I know when to stop, when to change my flow, when to, you know, all the, yeah. all that. So anyway, so Izzy, my my daughter was watching me, and so she she'd be like, you know, when the chorus would come on. And they're the hardest critics. They'll tell you what's up. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> she loved it. When he's like, she, honesty, yes, man, oh, honesty. Every there, time. <laughs> there are some songs like if it's if if it's not mel- melodic enough, she'd be like, next. You know, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know. So that's your that's your producer like for sure. One out of three songs, and my kids will like pick up on it and sing along. Yes. If they're not fucking with it, they tell me like, "Dude, shut up." Isn't it funny? <laughs> and that, if not, they'll pick up and they'll sing along. That's why I was happening. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. that's what she was doing. So on the chorus, she'd be like, "Love me, love me." <laughs> no, <laughs> I wanted to record it so bad. That's Uh-oh. cool. But you know that's that music. So back to the story about the the person I was talking to about the kid that's just sort of having issues. You know uh, there were two things I recommended because 
you know, the, the high, str- I was that high strung kid. So I can just see that. Right. And I know that, you know, as a mother, I, I, I know what she was going through. So I'm like, you know what? The two things I You're recommend. Mother? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. My Whoa. mom raising me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she didn't do a good job. But <laughs> <laughs> it's Mother's Day tomorrow, so. Uh, <laughs> no, tell me. <laughs> uh, she struggled. <laughs> so, Everybody struggled. Yeah, yeah, struggled. Oh, yeah. 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 Baby, baby, baby. My kids are amazing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, all kids go to foster care, right? <laughs> I struggle to not cuss them out. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, anyway. I just the two things I recommended was martial arts, you know, something to yeah. get that, um, you know, to because in martial arts they start with your head first, right? They don't teach you how to like twist a neck, you know, first. <laughs> yeah. They they uh. teach you like get your mind right. Yeah. And so I said, you know, I, I recommend he goes in that direction. And then the other thing too is if he is showing any type of artistic interest, uh, like throw a piano in front of him, throw a guitar in front of him, and, and just let him because that's something like. You know, when I was high strung, I was so high strung that it would push everybody away, right? So I was so isolated. So I became an introvert. And um, and so when I was alone, that's when I'd write all my music. But if I knew how to play a guitar, uh, I would have, I feel like my music could have been just, it could have been a little bit different, you know? But I just, you know, with these kids, when they struggle like that, you know, in these schools, these counselors, they just are not equipped. So it's like, we it's almost on us to find that path for these kids you know yeah it, it absolutely is on us for sure because we know these kids you know uh or we think we know right well, uh, yeah we try right uh but you know we have a little bit of insight because they're they come from like our our, our dna state, like yeah, our hardwiredness our, yeah. yes um and but you know in the past it's like a lot of the information wasn't there a lot of you know blah blah yeah. blah uh luckily i was you know when growing up like living in apartments right begging for a drum set begging for a guitar and mm. for like probably like two years and then in an they, apartment in an apartment oh. and then all of a sudden it happened Gangsta. like it was a christmas you know they buy us our fucking drum set with our little amp yeah in the apartment and we set it up and we started just playing songs we don't i mean I didn't know how to play the drums. I didn't get taught, but I was listening to enough Metallica to yes. know the song, so I knew what to do. Played it by ear. Exactly. Wow. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that I'm a prodigy because I didn't go much further than Lars Ulrich's style of weak drumming. <laughs> but <laughs> um, when, you know, luckily my parents, like, they, they, they didn't have the money to buy, like, all these, everything we wanted, but, yeah. you know, they afforded what they could in our apartment next to our fucking bunk bed. Yeah. Eventually, it, it, me and my brother decided to like take our bed away and like discard it. We didn't have beds. We had a drum set and amps. In that our is amazing. That's, that's that, how you know you're deep into music to yeah. give up your fucking bed. And say fuck it. I'd rather have the equipment. I'll right sleep here. on the yeah. floor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that is, <laughs> respect. And, man, we had so much fun. And like right now, I'm tatted up with like musical figures in honor of them. Like kind of like focusing on them, but like. In memories of like me and my brothers oh, upcoming, like oh, this that is, is what we were into. This is who we were as teenagers, which is great, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, but now like we're able to have like a little bit of a closer insight. And then now with our kids, okay, well, no, if this guy wants to be a football player, if this guy, or if this guy has interest in drawing or music, uh, we gotta let it be. But we can facilitate it a little bit more. And then if they start picking it up, we'll get him and we'll get him a teacher and then we'll get him, hey, you wanna make a living off of this? Yeah. If this is the lifestyle, if you want that, you know, we can figure out what we can do to help you. Yeah. Because nowadays, uh with internet or with uh with all the information we got, like, come on, we we could do whatever. Absolutely. We want without- even if we don't got the money to do it, Dude. But there's ways to do it. And yeah. So could you say that was probably the most meaningful tattoos that you've witnessed? I'm not saying you've done yourself, but that has hold that holds a story. The musical tattoos that you have on yourself is that what you want to say? Like what's most closest to you in, ta- in, in regards to tattoos? Oh yeah. Like for example, if you look at my like I'm into portraits, faces. Mm-hmm. I have an obsession with faces, right? And I have an obsession with music. So. I have my te- my leg sleeve is all just faces and music and mm-hmm. decisions. Yeah, we know. And yeah. It, it's not to uh, idolat like to make him an idol. Mm-hmm. I know that they're human beings that are probably like that. I probably don't even like him if I know him personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
but it was such a huge influence in my life. Sure. And it takes me back to my 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year old with my brother in my room fucking playing every wow. note and jamming, you know, and that's, that's so kind of dope. what it is to me. Yeah. Like that kind of shit. It, it's, a, it's a portrait because I love portraits. This guy's sick as fuck. Mm. But... You know, growing up, me and my brother, this is what our shit. Yeah, yeah, yep. I mean. yep. so it's, like, it's, it's the meaning. I don't ever like ever question anybody's tattoo, whether it's fucking an infinity symbol, or whatever, because inside them, you there's know. a there's a exactly. reason. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. A reason. Whether it to like, if anybody sees my look, they be like, "What the fuck you got? In your face? Even if <laughs> the fuck is that old man? <laughs> right. It doesn't matter because to me, it's like it's not the old man; it's the fucking the meaning. What behind about it, like right? uh, yeah, 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 like yeah. jackass, right? Like uh, Steve-O has like those little smiley faces. Oh, yeah, when they know. were doing it like when they were doing it like in an obstacle course, and he was trying to catch him, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. What do you? I, well, I didn't know. I I just know he he, he did a. Uh, oh my so god! They were, like, in a know car. they were in a car in like a fucking like super like texture no. terrain, and and the trick was okay. We're gonna get tatted in this oh, fucking crazy oh, car shit. and he's got to do the best that he can. Oh. That's what that. That's what that was. Oh wow! I didn't yeah. know that. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. yeah. Wow, talk about so, talent. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you so learn you something every day. On that one, would you? <laughs> no, I mean it's you know fucking Stevo. Yeah, know, like, you can do whatever he wants. Do you, you think? Do for like, sure. Yeah. Did, would I don't know if it's ever. I mean, I heard, I've heard things in the past, but like if a company were to like sponsor a tattoo, be like, hey, we're gonna have you do the McDonald's tattoo, you know, just like pay a celebrity to do that. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Yeah, I tattooed this girl. Uh, she was working for a bar slash restaurant, and uh, I tattooed the logo on her. Really? Her, oh, wow. Her boss paid for it. Wow. And she was just down. So where, whatever. Like, where was it? Somewhere it was where? in here. Okay, so yeah. if you're at the bar and she's wearing her top, you would see it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I mean, that was interesting. Yeah, right. I didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't care. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, it could be like, like what you're saying, you know, there's probably a story to that. Well, you know, sometimes there's not. Like, in this case, judging, I don't know this person very well, but, you know, Maybe it was just that. Oh, <laughs> some people just want to be tatted, and I appreciate that too. Yeah. You want to look a certain way. For example, you want to get your nose done. You want to get your fucking whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Rizzo. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> someone well, might have said anything, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. It is funny that I mean we're sort of entering this time where people can be more as expressive as they want, and. Like we don't clap. Like it used to be way back in the day. Like say the '60s, right? The only people that had tattoos were sailors, you yeah. know. Yeah. And then it just like sort of grew into this thing. And now I remember when the first time I saw people getting face tats, I'm like, oh my god, how are they gonna work a job? You know? Yeah. The one era that comes to me when face tattoos is like the Little Wayne era. Yeah, that's what it was. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. yeah. So? It was right. That. Right. It was that. Oh shit. Little, like for example, Little Wayne. You know, brought the like the rock Baby, vibe all them. into yeah. the hip hop scene. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You that's know? right. And he's uh, he's tied he's it up as fuck. He's, he's a genius. Yeah, and like all it takes he is like a the world. Yeah. 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 Right. Literally, it takes one person to make that type of movement. Because I remember then Starbucks, right? Like before they would have all their employees cover all their tattoos. And then there were so many employees with tattoos that they finally just like outnumbered yeah. any type. Like, hey, if you don't want people to serve Man, coffee, that's fine, but we're gonna show our tattoos. Yeah, and there's everybody's tatted nowadays. Yeah. Anybody and everybody. Oh, um, not everybody. Well, I'm saying, like, <laughs> you're like sad, like you're left out. You're, like, mm. <laughs> you're not tatted. None, none, not oh, even one. Don't even talk to me right now. <laughs> get out. You get are out. gonna be the one that tattoos it. You gotta though. get like, tatted. Like you, you're, you're gonna be the one. You're gonna, well, you're you gonna pop my no, shirt. Like, you can't get like Roman numerals or something. You gotta get a piece. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you gotta get a piece. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling okay. you. I think for no no no. I wanna say this. I want it to mean something. Though. Okay, no no no, 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 no. You gotta get a piece. Bro. Let's yeah. say this. Let's say this. <laughs> Let, uh, okay, f uh, ride with me on this one. A million a million follow or a million subscribers on YouTube. Our tip uh, tip -tick podcast logo on us. The logo that a we have. Million? There. A million. A milli. A milli is a fucking mile. Yes, I mean, there's eight billion people on Earth. Well, there's nah. 
I mean, uh, there's a we don't know how people big... in in uh, in in Seattle. Well, okay, big or small, no, we, we haven't we haven't decided on the size, but I'm saying that would be good enough to, for us, both of us. This is including double double package, two birds with one stone. Don't get me when I've had drinks in me. Okay, you know, let's have this. Right, the two for one special contract. right here. Yeah. Thank you. Listen, you got to be sharp right now. Right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> when he's got that fucking Jameson in him, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I did. That's good. <laughs> it was smooth. That was I'm, I'm empty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even saying I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not, I, in fact, I plan on eventually getting no, a what piece. I meant was like, you know, you got doctors, you got everybody in, in, in at all kinds of places tatted because, you know. Have you seen our police lately? Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's one police guy up in Regal Cinemas. He's always there, dude. He's like sleeved up. Yeah, tatted, dude. Yeah. And I think it looks dope as fuck. Yeah, it just, it, I do. I think it just correlates to like a lot of, you know, in the past, in the past, uh, a lot of people like to pretend, right, to put up a front and like, oh, I'm this like person. I'm hard. Um, no, I'm like oh. a good person, blah, oh. blah, blah. Like I... I shy away from like the negative, like. Shit. I gotcha. But it's like, just because you dress a certain way doesn't make you or dress or participate in a certain thing doesn't make you that. What makes you is who you are. Yeah. Right? You can look. Speak you can, on it. You don't even have to put on a bow and tie and go to Sunday service to be better than who you actually are. <laughs> go into Sunday service, motherfucker. Right. There's That's a the there's a lot of. Uh, Catholic choir boys that uh, got molested by a lot of people <laughs> with no tattoos. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I think you were going there. That, and it's not to say like Catholics aren't okay. That's yeah, not I'm not picking either. on Catholics. I'm yeah. just saying That's like, not to say that I'm, either. I'm trying to prove your point. Yeah. And, and, and I'm trying to prove that point because right, we brought that up, but at the same time, like, it's important to say there's a lot of Catholics that are for sure like legit ass motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Legit ass people. Yeah, of course. Uh but it's just to say, man, it's just a clusterfuck. And so you just let me let me just be break who it you down. Are. Yeah. What uh, the real and reason no, why wait, oh, yeah. don't fall. No, the point is don't fall for appearance. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. That's, that's, the, that's point. the important. Don't so, fall yeah. for appearance Here, yeah. no matter where you're at. Ab 100%. And read And that's the coming person. from the pro. The pro. Not the even. person that does it's it. It's just coming from for real, right? Don't yeah. judge by appearance, whether it's good or bad. Like, just because this guy seems good, don't think he's good. Yeah. Just because this guy seems bad, don't think he's bad. Just because I'm wearing pit vipers doesn't make me cool. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. but, but I know it's he is. See, me personally, I know cool. he is. So uh, I can only exactly. speak from my personal experience. So if you know you're rocking those in yeah. front of me, I want to rock them now. Yeah. <laughs> But if you're a piece of shit and you're rocking those in front of me, like, yeah. fuck those glasses. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and See how that works? Sure. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, dude. Put pit vipers on this. That's custom this made right there. He yeah. did that himself. That's there custom. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Even no, better. But the real reason I've never got a tattoo, and like, this is honest to God, is my life has changed. No, it's changed so much, right? So, like, if I was uh, 18. And and I got a tattoo. I I don't even know if it would be a tattoo that I would still be happy with today. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Like, I just don't know. Yeah. And so that's my biggest fear is that like, am I in, you know 10, 20 years from now going to be the same person that I am now? So I, it has to be something that's a core. Like I have a core to me. It has to be a core. Thing. Yeah. I thought about that a lot, and I feel like I feel like you'll never know. For example. Um, you're going to change no matter what. In five, ten years, mm -hmm. your mind's going to be different than what it is right now in this moment. Mm -hmm. Like You're probably going to be like, oh, fuck that shirt. Right. Fuck that hat. Fuck those glasses. Yeah. Because it's going to be a different time. Yeah. And your mind's going to be different. You're going to experience so many more things, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I have a really good welding friend, Sean Montoya, fucking boss. What's up, Sean? Yeah. Uh, Sounds like a cool name, Sean. No, What's he's, up? He's fucking about his shit. He doesn't fuck around. Um, and when I first met him, I first started tatting. The first year I started tatting, and I was doing semi decent tats, right? And we were welding together. And uh, he came to the house. I was tatting at my house because I was still learning. And 
and he likes to have a drink and he likes to smoke and I like to smoke and I like to have a drink. Mm -hmm. And it was his birthday and we were kicking it and we were fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> we were fucked up and he's like, fucking put a rose in my chest. I'm like, dude, I'm <laughs> like not right off rib? right now. Like just right off rib, like yeah, whatever. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. shit. Because he's into tats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm like, nah, dude, I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm fucking fucked up. And he insisted and I was like, fuck it, this is going to be fun. And <laughs> we tatted a rose and it was decent, but yeah, yeah. you know, it was a drunk rose, but it was decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but, but, well, I like the honesty. I like the honesty. And, respect and, that. Respect it. And yeah. years go by and, and I continue tatting him. Yeah. And, um, and then I'm like, and then I bring up like the past and I'm like, hey, you know, whenever you, we can like fix that or whatever. He's like, no, bro, like this is. The, like I like good tattoos, but mm. this is a to me this is an experience, and I'm always gonna remember. Wow, experience. See, that's oh, when it, you yeah. know it's real as shit, right? Yeah. Because you're taking from that moment that happened, you're taking that and absorbing that to where I wanted to leave it as when you made it, leave it as is. It's almost yeah. like a scar. Exactly. Like, when, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying about like my musical tats. Like, I don't look at my tats as what they are, but I look at them as the time when I got them and uh, what I was thinking uh, and why I got them and what I was feeling, which is actually very important to me. That speaks to me. All right. All right. So, I, so and I think, so to throw in my two cents when I got mine, it's because they were important meanings, one for my, for my daughter and one for obviously my, my pup that I had that was actually a part of my family when me yeah. and my wife got together. They're important roles because that actually happened. It wasn't yeah. in the time moment where it felt like that. Yeah. It actually happened. It's a part of my life. And yeah. I'm going to keep those as scars that it happened in my life. Yeah. And that's what it is. So I can yeah. relate to that for sure. That's dope. So, yeah, that's so we're waiting for you, bro, to get a tap, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be there. I want to be there. I mean, we, we, we I said that we would uh, have it live, like live feed it straight oh, on Instagram. Right. And yeah. we we're going to do that. And we we're going to yeah. have just a conversation we going get the through the podcast. We look the machine right now? Yeah. Assistant. <laughs> <laughs> just straight up mid session. All right. Oh, so it's uh, just the ghost. <laughs> I want to. I want to go into a direction. I don't know how comfortable you would feel. Um, Hello, uncomfortable, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it's 2022, bro. Right. Come on, man. So like, okay, so <sighs> psychedelics. Oh, have you, have you ever done anything psychedelic? Around. Anything? I've never done any psychedelic. Uh, my any parents won't allow it. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I've Shout never out done to mom and pop. I, I smoke. I've smoked weed, and I like. I enjoy it. Um, and I have a, um, two friends, two close friends, that um, have messed around with mushrooms. Yeah, mm -hmm. or shrooms, whatever. Uh, and uh, they tell me that it's like a positive experience, mm -hmm. and that they get to reflect on a lot of things and get answers or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And I would feel like with, you know, with where I'm at in life, I would like to try it out. Uh, but at the same time, um, it seems like a lot for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a very, yeah, I feel you, I feel you. very like dramatic person in my head Yeah. to where it's definitely scary to everyone. Yeah, of course. I think I'm on that. the same page as you because, um, it, and I kind of know where you're going with this, Brett, because uh, we talked about this off air. We're yeah. like, hey, man, I want to do ayahuasca one day but I wouldn't want you to do it with me. Now, mind you, it's kind of similar to when we started the podcast because like, I, I know I didn't want you to write solo and I'm like, fuck it, dude, I'll stick with you. Fuck, let's do, let's do the podcast. Yeah. I'll, I'll write with you on this one, right? But when he asked me that, I was like, same thing, right? I'm like, I don't know how to react to it. Like, I feel like I, uh, half of me wants to do it, half of me doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go on that undecisive balance because like, I want to be for sure. If I'm going to do something, yeah. I want to go on it 100%. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about ayahuasca, by the way? Um... It's supposed to technically open only your third Netflix, eye. Only Netflix shit. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't even know how much I know about it. Um, other than what I do know about it is that it's a completely spiritual journey. Yeah. You know, and it's like, a th you know, it's like some people like s see psychedelics as a way of getting high, right? Like mm. uh, escapism. Yeah, yeah. The way I see it is a way to confront the basically not i don't want to say the demons but like the confront the things in your life the obstacles in your life that are holding you back and going face to face with it right so like mine would be my ego and and being able to look face to face with my ego and 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 i don't know what i'm going to see i don't know what i'm going to experience um but I, I like i want it to be able to address it in a way that like i can 
feel overcome. comfortable. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I treat it as more of like a tool as a medicine, yeah. right? Not as a, a way to escape, but as no, a no. way to confront. Right. And, and um, come. something that it, I have to be in my subconscious and not in my conscious world to, so, to be able to address. I'm, so to me, when I smoke, when I smoke weed, I get exactly that. Uh-huh. Mm. I start, you know, when people say they start getting paranoid. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Get paranoid as fuck. I but, do too. But it's because I get tired. I <laughs> straight up. I mean, I get tired. Because like my thoughts of my like demons or yeah, my, yeah. Like, my like insecurities or my flaws yeah. start to really like, you know, come to the forefront. Exactly. Yeah. And so when I smoke. I enjoy that fucking paranoia because I'm like, okay, let's fucking think about all the bullshit. Mm. And let's. Wow. So you confront your. I, with, uh, I, th- I feel like marijuana does that for me. Yeah. And I enjoy it as much as like if I overdo it, it'll just consume you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like that's why I'm a little bit nervous about going further into mo- into shrooms because it's like okay i'm probably gonna see some shit yeah right i'm probably gonna see these fucking demons yeah that i haven't even overcome using the marijuana yeah you know what i'm saying yeah right so, right uh i enjoy the marijuana and i enjoy confronting myself i enjoy putting myself accountable because it holds me back from fucking up even more and it puts me in perspective yeah. within myself that's beautiful um it's almost like controlled, like you. Can... It is, um, but if I overdo it, then I just become self conscious. Yes. So then it's like, okay, well, let's smoke a little bit and and figure out, okay, hey, you can't be doing this shit, or uh, let's think about this shit that you don't want to even think about. Let's think about it. Let's mm. fucking f- get in there. Let's get dirty, and I enjoy that because that's I, I want to better myself. Yeah. Um, but it can become a crutch, you know. Or it become it can become a fucking uh, negative thing too if you overdo it. Absolutely, and and yeah. don't overcome, and so that's why I'm scared to do the shroom stuff because it's like, am I in the right state? Am I gonna have a really negative experience? Am I gonna freak out? Yeah, yeah. and if I do, that's okay because I probably that probably means that I need to figure some shit out, mm-hmm. right? But um, I have kids and I have yeah. a daily life. I, yeah, yeah, a, yeah absolutely. So I got if I were to do that, which maybe one day I'm gonna do it because I know there's a controlled way to do it. Yeah. And I know that there's like uh like a fixed way to like not overdo it with the yeah. or whatever. Um but I have to figure out a day where like I don't got anything going on. Anything yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids and I'm with somebody or I'm like in a safe spot where I'm not gonna do some crazy. Yep. Shit. Yes. Because I don't know anything about it. It's very it's very yeah. the way they do it, they actually have people that guide you through it and they take care of you through oh, yeah, the whole process. Isn't that like a week I watched yeah. 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 Isn't that like a week experience though, or like a weekend? Yeah, it's like a it's it's like a I don't I don't know how long it goes, but it, they definitely have somebody looking after you. Yeah. To make sure okay, you're well, good. You have a shaman. Yeah, shaman. Well, there you go. That's yeah. what it is. Okay, well that you know, for example, okay, I was talking about like weed and, and shrooms. shrooms. Shroom. Yes. Which is like not as like much as ayahuasca. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I feel like okay, maybe I can figure my life out with weed and shrooms. Maybe hopefully I don't need <laughs> ayahuasca. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. You okay. Know what I'm yeah, 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 yeah. So, For sure. I'm not necessarily trying to go fucking For higher than every yeah, yeah, yeah. take ayahuasca. I yeah. hope I don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um uh, would I do? Would I try shrooms in a controlled environment? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Because I definitely got some demons that I need to figure out, for sure. Uh, and hopefully, I, I can all figure do, right? out through weed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, ayahuasca to me seems very like um, interesting. The big guns, but it's like, hey, let's figure yourself out before you try. Maybe step I feel it. That. Yeah, so crazy. I feel that. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Yeah. No. I, you know, and the thing is, multiple like, levels when, to it, baby. Multiple you know, levels with, to it. With yeah. ayahuasca, I've heard of so many people with their experiences, and you know, confronting their, you know, their. I, I hate to say demons, right? Because demons is such a, but it's like the things that hold you back. I, I call right. it obstacles. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Those obstacles in your life that you know, you know, and I know that ego is one of mine, and and it's not even like deliberate. I mean, it's something that we all have. Yeah, for sure. And um. And I just, I just want (laughs) to be able to, I guess, just find, 
I want to see my ego face to face and then just be able to um, confront it and, and, and submit, right? I don't want to have to feel like I need to be bigger than this ego or whatever this thing is, right? I want to... The cigar sexy. Oh, right, right, right. Um, <laughs> good night, good night. <laughs> but I, I just, I, I, I want to be a better person. That's the yeah. ultimate goal: is to be able to be a better person, a better husband, a better person to the world, a better friend, a better everything, right? Yeah. And so, and I feel like the thing holding me back right now is this unknown entity, right? I, I, I've addressed it right now as ego, but maybe it's not ego. Maybe it's something else, right? But it's, yeah. it's there. I just haven't, it's in the shadows. It's, it's not identified to me. So I asked Eddie, I said, would you do this ayahuasca with me? Yeah. And he's like, hell to the no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to say that. Like, I want to say hell to the no ever. I mean, I'm just saying that like, I'm the same with Luis. For me, weed, it gets me tired. I mean, it gets me tired, I eat, and I get fat. Like, that's just the thing, straight up. Like, I, I, weed to me, it just makes me eat and lazy. But, like, Awaska, like, I've read a little bit about it. I'm familiar with it, right? I'm just afraid to see what's, like, on the other side of that door. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, obviously, I have fears in life. Everybody has fears in life. Yeah. They have. And it's, like, to see them in the forefront and to actually see them for what they really are when they, quote, unquote, say that you open your third eye. I mean, if you're stepping into the unknown, bro. Like yeah, it's point. right. It's, 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 a big deal. it's a it's a big deal. But I think Luis ha actually ha brought up a good point, like the, with the fact of shrooms, right? Shrooms is like not quite to the point of ayahuasca. Yeah. Maybe that would be a good starting point. Yeah, baby right? step it. I think However, I will. It. I will say, um, you know, I'm on a spiritual journey. I know I'm on a spiritual journey right now. I'm I'm like at a stage in my life right now that I'm I'm tired of running. I'm tired of hiding. I know that this universe is putting me on a spiritual journey. Yeah. So just out of the blue, someone approached me about some, you know, just some shit that like they, if the universe wasn't working in the way it was working, yeah, it was like they all of a sudden came up with some shit, like out of the blue shit that was on my level. And I'm like, wait a minute, why would you ask me a question like this? And I forget that the question was something like, this is recently. Yeah. Oh this shit. Week, this week. Oh shit. And uh long story short, I found an ayahuasca partner. I found someone who wow. was just as willing as me to go through this experience, who's dealing with the same thing with his life, who just has this unknown thing. And we've just like agreed that, okay, you know what? Let's do this thing and let's like be there for each other through this experience. And um and don't make fun of me when you see me confronting my whatever this thing is, this dark shadow that's that exists that I don't I haven't been able to identify. Yeah. But um, he sort of braced me. He's like, you know, you're going to you're going to cry, you know, because I don't cry. I just I don't. It's like fucking my mom beat the shit out of me when I was a kid. And I promised that I would never cry again. Just fucking won't do it. And I know that that's going to be something that like that's a wall a barrier that I will have to break down because you cannot get through that past that stage unless you let it all out and uh, scares me to death. Right. And oh, it's wow. something you want to be with someone you trust. And uh, and so it's good when you can find someone on that, that same level. But yeah. That's uh, it's just the universe right now is just doing some crazy shit in my life. <laughs> the stars are aligning, my friend. I'll tell you. Yeah. That. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. I would say, for example, I don't. I personally look. Uh, my personality would be kind of like you to say to be inclined to try ayahuasca or to try shrooms or just try weed, like I smoke weed, right? I don't, right? And I would like to bring up my brother, right? Mm -hmm. Who he's probably closest to who I am. Yeah. He's he's only two years older than me. And we grew up this exact same way. And we're com like very different. And uh but we grew up in the same shit, right? Yeah. Um and he's very like methodical, like he's very sharp. Like I feel like I'm slow next to him, right? Mm. In in this in in an aspect. Uh, and like he would be like, fuck all that shit. You as a person have the ability to overcome that um, just with just with your wits and yeah. just just by trying and just by 
not folding and just by doing what you got to do and focusing on your career and focusing on blah, 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 yep. blah, blah, blah. And you can build your life the way you want to build your life mm -hmm. by just being smart and focusing yeah, and just overcoming as a human being because we're capable. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And even though naturally I'm not like that and naturally I tend to more like the more like dramatic sensitive shit. I can still connect with what he's saying yeah. and say, mm -hmm. and when I'm when I'm in position of like, oh fuck, I can like think about this motherfucker who's been there, and he's been in those down times, and be like, ah oh, man, like fuck, could be in a bitch. Yeah, for sure, for well, sure. I agree. I I can relate to what you, yeah. um, not your your life, but I can relate to your sentiment. Um, and I'm trying to like put it, my brother out as a person that is completely different to like this scenario and the people that I've met that go into what we're talking about because of our personalities and our kind of like differences as human beings. Yeah. But I think that it's important to know that there's other people out there that are made from the same essence that don't need that. Mm -hmm. And and figure out, even though they're all so weak, figure out a way to say, hey, as a human being, I can handle and I can overcome without that stuff. Absolutely. And the reason why I say that is not to put that stuff down because maybe there is some healing in that. But, uh, and, and, so this is just like a crazy topic, right? Mm -hmm. So for a while, I was very religious and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when you get there, all this ayahuasca talk, all this mushroom talk, all this we talk is a negative thing. Right. And it's a diabolical thing, right? I don't 100% correlate to that anymore because I know the flaws in that system. And I know that that's just a business game. Uh, but it's something to consider so that you can see the full aspect, right? It's easy to like dive into something into or into many things that can act that can also do more damage. Yes. Right? Yes. But what I'm trying to get at is not the damage. What I'm trying to get at is that, like, we're actually way stronger than what we think. Yeah, 100%. And if we can push ourselves before we choose to do shrooms or before we choose to do or before we even choose to smoke weed, yeah. you know, I smoke weed out of enjoyment. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And then it gets me to a negative spot where I'm able to like fucking really like consider myself, right? Uh, I feel like doing the shrooms or the ayahuasca is almost like a last resort. Yeah, um, like a hospital. Like yeah, you, you've got a broken leg, yeah. and you can only do so much. Yeah, at home you're definitely going to the you're like yeah, yeah. okay yeah, yeah, I gotta yeah, yeah. But, I gotta go. But in. let's let's fucking really push our like, and I'm just taking the example of my brother who mm -hmm. we grew up the same. Like I didn't live a fucked up life. I didn't live the best ultimate life. Yeah, you know we had our struggles, but hey, this guy's a fucking solid motherfucker. You know yeah. he's, he's doing a lot I of things. Look up to him. Yeah, yeah, I look yeah, up yeah, to yeah. him in many ways. And yeah, and shout out to your bro. Perfect. Shout out to your yeah. bro. Yeah. Um, Ivan Hernandez, Bimtech, he's yeah. fucking the BMW guru. Hey, if anybody oh, Ivan, I like that. You have an open invitation to the Tim Podcast. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, 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 have yeah, yeah, him yeah. next, bro. Yeah. Dude. You want to talk to anybody, Done. talk to this guy. Okay. Ivan Done. Hernandez, hey, Bimtech, you're on our he, schedule. We're going for you, baby. You got a Beamer. You want to go fast, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hit him up. Keyword right. How you put yeah. it in bold letters. This, you know like, this guy doesn't fuck around. He doesn't try to shortcut any. And yeah, this is why I'm bringing him up. Yeah. Because I feel like. There's a lot of shortcuts. This guy doesn't do shortcuts. I uh, love it. You know it. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So it's an example. I'm not, I'm, I'm I not saying you. that he's fucking, you know, the best. Because yeah, fuck, yeah. I even. Yeah. <laughs> so, Luis, I, I, I just. <laughs> you know, solid. Solid we were dude. talking about like the, the ayahuasca, the shrooms, you know, and, and much like you, like religious, you know, journey. I've been on my own religious journey as well. Right. And, and I have always been one of those people that, um, 
you, you know, like sobriety, right? If you can do it with your own mind power, like our minds are so powerful to yeah. be able to like, hey, we're going to do this. This is my goal. You know, and that's how I've been able to do most of my life. All of my life was through my own ambitions and willpower and decisions to just be a better person, do a better, you know, the only reason I came to this point, this juncture in my life was because it's a feeling like there's something external that's mm. pushing me into this direction. And, you know, I've like, I, I don't, that's why I, I, I'm not seeing this as a form of escapism. It's like, man, I, I, my soul right now, there's something external calling me into going this direction. And, and, you know, and so when I talk to people about like the Bible, you know, there's the story about, uh, is it Moses with the talking to the burning bush? And there's people, there's speculation that, you know, he was on a psychedelic himself. I heard that before too. Yeah. And, you know, and I just feel like, you know, there's so many scientific studies that have shown the, the healing power mm -hmm. of psychedelics that, uh, it's healing mental illness, and right now we have more mental illness than we've ever seen in this country, in this world. Yeah, and we're under so much pressure, and we're just humans are not designed to be under this amount of pressure. And you, you know, and it's just like it, it, again, it's just like, what if Moses was on psychedelics? What you know, the Native Americans, the indigenous people of of our country, they had the peace pipe, right? The peace pipe, yeah. where they had their own form of psychedelics that connected. It was a direct conduit with the gods. Yep. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, I, I want to test. I want to see if I can connect. I can have that same conduit to this greater thing. And you know, for me, you know, I just my me personally, I I do. I am a Christian and I do believe it is God. It is the Christian God and whatever. But I, I, I'll, I, I try not to like push that to people's it's direction. So right. I mean, Cause everybody yeah. has their own path. Yeah. And, and I think that everybody has their own form of that. But I think that these things that grow naturally, yeah. you know, they mm -hmm. say that the DMT is in your brain and that yeah. we're calcifying it, you know, and that the, the powers to be are, are putting fluoride in our water on purpose to calcify to, our to suppress it pretty much. Yep. Yeah. So that they don't, so that we don't get to that. To that see the point. truth. I'm and all sure that. that, I'm sure that nobody was like, let's fucking put calcium or whatever the fuck. Right? Fluoride. Fluoride. Into the shit so they don't fucking put go in there. Maybe, maybe not, but maybe, maybe that was like God sent to be like these guys can't even like these guys shouldn't even try to climb up here. Mm, That's just a babble. That's just a thought. But man, nobody fucking knows, right? Like, right. Christianity, like to Muslims, is a joke, right? Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. vice versa. So it's like. Nobody knows. We only have our own experiences. You have your own life. I have my own life mm -hmm. and your own experience. Whatever feels natural and and real and and in your heart, yeah, you should pursue. But pursuit. But uh, consider everything before you dive into anything. Right. Consider the extreme and consider um, consider that. Everything's a business, and consider that religion is a business. Yeah. And consider that uh, shamans are also into their money, whether or not they're fucking like on Instagram. Mm, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they're in some other shit. I hear that. Um, yeah. So, and consider your strength and consider what you're made of. And, and I know that's not easy to do depending on where you are emotionally, right? And just like spiritually and internally. Everybody is different. Everybody has a different path. And everybody gets presented different things in life according to what they're going through. So I can't tell you, you got to be born again mm -hmm. because maybe you don't got to be born again. Right. Because maybe I'm meant to be a maybe Buddhist. Because you're fucking, <laughs> maybe, you know, right? You're living a different continent and yeah. you're not going to be a Christian if you live in fucking... Well, that's the crazy thing, right? Is like we can, you know, as Christians have our own experience, right? But then you can talk to people who have like, um, I don't know what the religion in India is, but they have like the chakras mm -hmm. and all that. Right. And they have the same experiences we have. Right. And, you know, so they're connecting. That's why I just feel like there's some sort of 
overall entity. Yeah, there's got to be something else that we don't understand. And it's painted to our cultures according to what these human brain can understand. If there's one thing to... If there's a Bible, it's like an easy depiction of what really is out there mm. because we can't really understand what's out there probably. And, mm-hmm. and that's one thing that we've touched bases on the, on the podcast in general is that they're always referencing to something coming from the skies, something like yeah. some, there's always those little similarities we see b- between, you know, religion. Pyramids. Yeah, oh, pyramids, shit. right? Like how is it yeah, that right. that pyramids were built in Egypt but they had no communication with the Aztecs when they were building the pyramids? Like how is those similarities so similar? It, it's like it, that's the type of shit. Like it gets my mind spinning. Like, it's crazy. Like, it, it's it's like wild, dude. The pyramids in fucking Waka, like where like at a certain time of the year you can see the serpent snake gets a quad shadow through the sun on yeah. the pyramid going yeah. up. Like, come on, yeah, right. Yeah. How the fuck does that happen? That's right. the type of shit that like gets me Who, my wheel spinning. What like, did what they know? The, it's right? crazy. What did they know? Who did that? You know? Yeah. yeah. There's definitely got to be some other stuff that. We're not going to know what's up. We're not powerful as human beings to trap these guys and define them. Right. You know that, you know, oh, so there's this, like, back in the, I think, the 80s, where they there was a flying saucer that crashed, and they were able to get two aliens. Don't tell me Roswell. One of them died, and one of them stayed alive, and they were interviewing one of them. Oh, we've seen this before. you sent me this before. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and back in the day... When we were first getting the internet, everybody was like, "This shit's fake." But nowadays, you look it up today. We can, you guys should look it up tonight and confirm. But they're saying that that was actually legit, and it's fucking crazy. They're interviewing an alien who dies on camera. So oh. is is this the person that, or is this the the the, the being that they captured? And they were asking, "How does?" civilization or how does it perish because they were talking about like what caused this massive war and they said it was like uh, the different religions they had on planet like i don't know if it's the same one but you sent me something like this a long time ago yeah you the, sent somebody me this, sent me a, li- a yeah link. so this the stuff that i saw they don't go into detail about what he's saying about humanity and stuff it's just more into detail of like they're interviewing this alien that they're having captivity and he was speaking english died. english no, right no no okay he's, he and a lot of people like back in the day before the internet was as big as it is today and information and, uh, you know, information that is spread out to the public yeah. was like it is today. Back when you had to download these videos through fucking Napster and shit. Yes. Mm, yes. Right, right, right. So, Winamax, Kazaa, all that. Today, they're saying, and I got this to the source of this Hispanic UFO guy who's been doing this since the 80s. Okay. And now today he's saying, hey... This is confirmed stuff from the fucking... You're going to have to send us a link. Yeah, you got to send us a link. I, I will. Okay. Oh. Um, and this guy's in Spanish. This guy's name is uh, Jaime Maussan, right? I know. Okay. And, and back in the day, it seemed like a joke. Today, there's more information and there's more like science to figure it out. It's like validated. Yes. Mm. They have validated this was real in area of no 50 way. some shit. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh. Uh, where... This guy's telepathically communicating oh, with oh my god with these fucking people out of Area Fifty One. So the guy and, the, and they're videoing this, and the alien fucking dies on camera. Uh, and okay, I don't. This must they be don't different. go into uh, the details of the questions because they don't want to put shit out. Yeah. Um, and that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is that they're they're communicating telepathically with yeah. this with this extraterrestrial being. And he dies on camera. Wow. That's why I've never heard that. That's why look it up. Look okay, it up. No, no. Like, I saw this when I was like fourteen and you know, every everybody was saying, Fuck this shit, this shit's fake. Okay, so I saw this again today with the new narrative of this guy coming out, like, hey, everybody's confirmed that this is actually more real than, than it seems. Wow. All right. Uh, let, and then I looked at him like, damn, that's so crazy. So, so, so let me drop a little a little gem on you, too. The same thing. The same same setting as with you. 14 years old, right? I moved here in 2006. I was on my YouTube binge, you know, just fucking looking shit on YouTube. Because I'm at the time, before I came over here, I had a slow-ass fucking dial-up connection. Took fucking weeks to load up a page, right? 
came over here DSL fucking fast as fuck I was on YouTube DSL DSL yeah <laughs> not not that DSL but uh but so I, I was on YouTube right <laughs> I was on YouTube that was your DSL no no no, no. <laughs> come on for the camera <laughs> <laughs> that's a free one my only fans is that no <laughs> no 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 so Show up those feet. <laughs> no, 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 no 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 dude I heard they make a killing on the feed too though by the way but anyways no so so this guy named Bob Lazar have you heard that name before yeah 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 okay sure. Back then in 2006, they show these videos of Bob Lazar talking about how he's been working on back, he was re-engineering or reverse engineering these aircraft that they recovered from UFO crashes. Fast forward, right? He comes on Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. These videos come up about U.S. Navy pilots yeah. following this thing, flying in the same way that Bob Lazar back in 2006 described. Yeah. So you're telling me that's coincidental or they're saying that they're validating what he said, that there's things from this planet and the technology that we have no idea how it works, that it's, it's so advanced that we don't know how it works. And if we get a hold of, if we're able to reverse engineer this type of stuff, it's going to change the game forever. Well, so, yeah, absolutely. With the story that I was telling you, yeah. they try to reverse engineer and they, they don't have the intellect or the science or the human earthly information or capabilities standing to figure out what the fuck this is how you, this is even made yeah <laughs> and that makes sense like we're yeah. not gonna know we're n we're not gonna know so well how do you feel about the government opening up saying that they actually have a uap program now that they're keeping a close eye on these unknown entities that are flying around and they're they see them they've captured them on videos there's evidence out there so in the fucking space force in the space yeah, yeah. how I all of a sudden like they've been doing that as much as they can do that but at the end of the day we're humans and we're not them and we're I think that we're capable of so much. Yeah. But we are kept dormant for mm. a reason. So from your personal opinion, do you and believe there's something out there that that like you can't say specifically say we're the no, only living human 100%, beings here? There's uh, dude, there's creation, right? There are, or there whatever you want to de like describe that as. Yeah. There's definitely something way bigger and we're just a little speck of what is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you? Uh, my biggest fear with these things, like the aliens communicating telepathically, however they are with humans. Who are they communicating with? Is it always the government? Right. What is it? You know. No, I, I mean, think that they communicate. No, I don't fucking know. But yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, it, like, I, I don't want say, them making deals with the government, and then all of a sudden the government's they have like, to because the government runs the world, right? So I would feel like, okay. I would. This is what I think about the whole spectrum, right? Yeah. We're going down a fucking rabbit hole. I Eagle. love, I love it. it. <laughs> um, I would say that there's a bigger reality to our existence, which we get to enjoy. Probably, like, I feel like human beings. It seems to be that human beings are desired from ghosts or other entities in a certain way that we get to enjoy our lives mm -hmm. we get reasoning we get love we get all these certain extra things that maybe they don't get maybe they get superpowers and abilities but we get like a special human being thing to where we're desired to uh. be used and and we're protected at the same time by god or whatever yeah. other beings but there's definitely a whole other reason to what's going on to where, yeah, I'm sure that the creator or whatever it is has agents, angels, whatever, yeah. that get to come and influence the powers of these governments to create the lifestyle that is in order to have an end goal. Mm. Wow. So there's definitely wow. that, I feel like. Man. And we're not going to know. And right. I feel like we there's shouldn't... There's a veil over our eyes yeah, for a purpose. Yeah, absolutely. And, and some people have more insight than others because mm -hmm. I feel like there's probably like a 2% of the population that were, like you say, like if there was like when there was a Jesus, 
he wasn't like everybody else. He was probably like the only one yeah. or one of the only like two, 10%, whatever the mm-hmm. fuck percentage it is, to where he had a reason to be here mm-hmm. to be able to impact uh, impact the world to be able to continue the plot and the plan. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? It's wild. Yeah. It's almost like uh, also, uh, you know, speaking culturally, Mahatma Gandhi, you know, there was only one Mahatma Gandhi and he, the, the, you know, some of his quotes were so deep and so profound. You're like a human came up with those, those thoughts. And yeah. cause it resonates to every single one of us. When you read them, you're like, wow. Like what was the one that um, he said that oh one that he liked that I, and I if if I butcher it it's blame it on the illusion <laughs> blame it on the space dust <laughs> the space dust but it's like the coke you know <laughs> talking about the, uh, 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 <laughs> talking about someone who is forward thinking right at first um, at first they laugh at you then they attack you then you win. Because when, you know, you do it long enough and you're, you're right every time, then all of a sudden, like everybody's on your side, Yeah, you know, but it doesn't come without mockery and attacks. Yeah, absolutely. Like in anything, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, we like, don't know. We're not going to know. We're not going to get the answers. Mm. Uh, we can do science and we can try to go into Mars and stuff. But at the, you know, and that's cool. That's yeah. great. That and that's a, probably our job as human beings, not necessarily you and I, but as yeah. those intellectuals, yeah. because they're probably we're sent here uh, as a fucking astronaut, right? Those guys were probably sent here with a little bit of a more like brain uh, capacity, yeah, from the get go, yeah, to go that route. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here, fucking. Tattoo, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. getting groceries. I'm, I'm like yeah. filling up my car with petrol. Yeah, we're, exactly. we're, we're fucking podcasting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we're just right. doing the norm shit. You know what I'm saying? But you know, but that's what we're like our capacities. Yeah. Right? Like I'm gonna leave the fucking astronomical shit to those guys because yeah. I don't have that brain. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. But I do have like conscience, and I do observe, and I do watch that, and I do consider it. For sure. An open you know, mind. You pretty much have an open mind. Yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I feel and, it. Um, we just got to play our part and um, collectively we'll be fine. No, collectively we're going to go to where we're like uh, meant to go. Destined gonna, to if, go. If, if, yeah. Destined to go. If yeah. we're meant to be half robots, that would be cool too. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's wild stuff, man. Well, you know, I... Eddie, I don't know how how much longer you want to go. This is like definitely one of our longest runs that we've done. I mean, it's a good convo. I mean, I, I feel like it's a it, it could be if it could go on. I mean, I that's the thing. I don't. I, I don't. The only <laughs> thing I just gotta take a piss. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's let's go ahead and end it. And definitely, Luis, we gotta have you on again. But before you piss, um, let everybody know like we're at fade to black. Let yeah. everybody know well, where they can find you, your socials, your ta- all that. well, your so, tattoos, all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fade to black tattoos on Madison and Evergreen. If you're in Everett, uh, Luis Hernandez Art Instagram, Luis Hernandez Facebook. Mainly Instagram is the portfolio. Mm-hmm. So Luis L U I S Hernandez, H E R N A N D E Z Art. Send me a message. I'll try to reply within the next three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's where it's at. And we'll, we'll if you like my that. work, hit me up. If you want to get um, traditional tattoos, hit up the next traditional tattoo <laughs> artist around town, which they're amazing. Yeah. Uh, look at my work and look at the stuff that I do. And if you want that, let's... Let's do some fun shit. Yeah, definitely, and definitely. We'll, we'll put all of the. We'll put the the Instagram. We'll put your address in our uh, YouTube and in our Instagram, right? Yeah, our, our show notes at least. Everything, everything. Yeah. So one thing I do want to leave out though, uh, just just the same reference to you, bro. Uh, I just want to say like when we we're talking about if any any celebrities or anybody at a high caliber has seen your work. I can speak for myself, and I have fucking proof. If anybody wants to see it, uh, that's watching this on YouTube. I can tell you again, remind you that Josh Berlin that played Thanos oh, saw the tattoo. 
And he's like, let's get me a picture of this. That's because dope. that was the wow. first time. That's, he, wow. th- that's the first time that he's seen anybody had anything tattooed of, of the character from the movie. And then also the creator himself that created the character of Thanos in the comics saw that tattoo and he's like, I got to get a picture of that. So my friend, I can wow. tell you right now, nice. that right there, your work has been seen by two people that are, are playing a significant fucking role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, bro. So hey, I would sick. say you've got to hold that at a high caliber. Oh, and nice. I said that. My, my good friend Luis tattooed that, bro. Oh, sure. So, but for anybody that's watching, that's definitely amazing. check out his work. We're going to plug in his socials in the description on our YouTube video. But also follow us on Instagram at the Tidlich Podcast where you'll catch a clip of this and just all the clips of the up, up and coming episodes and just all that good jazz buzz. We're going to sign out. We love you again, Luis. Thanks for having us come yes, through. Yes. Uh, we we had, it was it was a phenomenal episode. We went every we went down a fucking rabbit hole, which yes, is it's like one of those key things we love doing, <laughs> and it was it was dope. So uh, we're gonna sign out. We'll catch you in the next one. Everybody, take care. Uh, have a good Friday. Have a good weekend. Stay safe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace, baby. Peace.